Hey everybody, welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. I've got a pretty cool one for you today. I'm not even really sure what to call this, but it was inspired or is inspired uh, by a tutorial that I found on or saw on Behance years ago. It feels like forever ago, but it wasn't forever ago. And I just recently rediscovered the tutorial. I found it again so I can link it and give the author proper credit down in the description of this video and share it with you guys. Um, they actually have much better examples of it than I'm going to show you here in the video because it's a pretty uh, amazing effect and there's so much you can do with it. Uh, the artist's name was Maria Gronland, I believe was her name. Don't quote me on that. There will be a link down in the description um, and it's all using Adobe Illustrator. Now, before we get going, make sure you like the tutorial. Hit the little like button if, of course, you like it. If not, I mean, still hit the like button because it's just the thing to do. Um, also, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you never miss another Adobe Illustrator tutorial in the future. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a plan to me. Without further ado, let's jump into this video and check this out. You can see um, th this is like a very neutered version of some of the cool things that we can do with this effect. Um, there's just all of these really super hyper intricate, like all these just little tiny lines swirling and moving around and over here this. And I'll also show you how to do this thing where you can add these dots automatically to uh, these points because this tutorial was also where I learned how to do that. So I just, I don't know, in my mind, I just associate the whole thing all together as one big thing uh, that, that you just need to know. So here's how we do it. I've just created a new document over here. It's got this darker background and uh, we're going to begin by grabbing the ellipse tool and I'm just going to click once with the ellipse. Well, I need to create a new layer here. I'm going to click once with the ellipse and I'm going to create an ellipse that's 20 pixels by 20 pixels. I'm going to hit OK and you're not going to see anything because the fill of the ellipse is the same as the fill of the background. Not very useful. Uh, I'm going to hit this little slash icon here, the none icon to get rid of the fill. I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to give it a stroke. It's going to give me that same bluish, purplish, whatever color. I'm going to come up here and just select this white color swatch right there, which is going to give me a white stroke. See that solid white stroke, nothing else. In fact, if I grab my black arrow, the selection tool there and deselect. You can see I have a single white circle in my document. Very cool. Well, not really that cool, but you know, it's what we want. We also have a one point stroke on it, I should mention. So one point stroke is the weight of our stroke. Now we're going to come up here and go effect trans, oh, well, distort and transform and choose transform. Here in the transform tab, we're going to move this uh, circle 25 pixels to, well, it's going to move it to the right. I'm going to choose preview. You can see we've bumped it to the right and I'm going to make 24 copies of it. So you can see we're just going to create this line of circles. So it's a pretty cool little effect effect here, the transform effect. I'm going to hit OK, and we've got this line of circles. Now we're going to go Object Expand Appearance to sort of turn this into a group of circles that we can do something with. And I'm going to open my brushes panel, which I actually already have open. And I'm going to hit this little icon here, the new brush icon. I'm going to hit new brush, and it's going to say, hey, what kind of brush? Well, I don't want a calligraphic brush. I want a pattern brush. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to say, all right, give me some pattern brush options. And really, all I'm going to do is tick on, flip across, well, flip along and flip across and approximate path. Everything else I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to name this, I don't know, circles. We'll give it a very creative name. Go ahead and hit OK and we can see here in our brushes panel there is a new brush added. We can't really see what it is because it's white circles over this white background. Don't worry, it is there. Next up, we're going to grab a new ellipse. We're going to click once. We don't want a 20 pixel by 20 pixel ellipse. We want, let's go like 625 by 625. We'll probably end up having to adjust this, but hey, let's live large. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to just drag this sucker to kind of the middle of my document. In fact, I'm going to align it to the middle of my document. There we go. And you can see I just have the circle. Well, I want to grab my direct selection tool right there, and I'm just going to drag a selection over the right half of the circle. It's going to select the one anchor point that I know is there, and then I'm going to hit the delete key to get rid of it. So now I'm left with a semicircle. And the next step is, well, we need to select the path first. We're going to go Object Transform Reflect, and there we go. I have it exactly how I want it to be. I want to reflect it along the vertical axis. I do want to preview it, but I don't want to, like, I want to save the other semicircle circle, but I want this to be a second semicircle, so I'm going to hit the copy button. And you can see it's going to give me a copy of the semicircle, uh, which is going to then mean I can just drag it right over to the right, and now I have two pieces of a single circle. Well, I actually kind of got ahead of myself a little bit, but I wanted to show you there how to duplicate and flip 
flip that semicircle. Really what you want to do is we want to select our half of the circle and select or not select but apply the pattern brush we just created by just clicking on that brush there in our brush panel. And you can see we've got a series of circles. Now they're more like ovals not so much circles and this is where that whole we might need to adjust this path comes into play. I'm going to hold down my shift key and drag the top uh, anchor point upward, upward, upward. I'm just going to keep dragging it up until these circles look like proper circles. There we go. That's a little bit more like it. And now I'm just going to align this to the uh, horizontal center there. All right. Now with this, we're going to go do that transform object, transform, reflect, uh, reflect vertical preview, hit copy. Boom. We've got two copies of this circle line. I'm going to drag this right over and I'm just going to use my arrow keys and just nudge it until it lines up kind of exactly the way it should. There's still a little bit too much of a gap. There we go. That's about right. Now I'm going to select both of these paths because they're still two individual paths. I'm going to select them both and I'm going to go object blend. And first I'm going to choose blend options. Now I, well, I've got my settings set here. It's as if I went ahead and ran and tested this all out before I started recording. We're going to set this to specified steps and a number of 30. I'm also going to choose the aligned to page orientation. So 30 specified steps tends to work well with this size oval. Uh, you may need to go up or down depending on how big or small your circle is. Specified steps 30, hit OK. It's not going to do anything yet because we have to go object blend make. So now we're going to make that blend and you're going to see we have all these crazy circles. Now we have a problem and that is the circles are going in all kinds of different directions. It really actually looks pretty bad because we've got a bunch of ovals in the middle and flat flipped ovals on the sides. The solution is to just simply resize uh, your overall artwork until we get rid of all that. So we can make this bigger or smaller. I'm actually going to make it a little smaller. Let's make it a little smaller. I'm going to keep going smaller until all the ovals are kind of the same shape. There we go. So just like that, even though we do end up having ovals around the edges, I actually don't mind it because at least the shape looks the way it's supposed to look. Now, it is one big blend. If I open up my layer panel, I can see that it's one big blend. This ellipse thing here is the group of circles we created before. So this is one big blend. We want to go object expand appearance, which is going to expand this out and you can see it's still a blend. So we want to go object expand again. We expanded the, uh, the appearance. Now we want to expand again. Now the only thing we want to expand because this is still a blend object is the blend. So uncheck fill and stroke. We just want to expand the object. Hit OK. And now this is a single group of all these other groups, which are all these little circles. And now we have something we can really work with. Before I do anything, we're going to come up here and make sure we align this to the horizontal and vertical edges of our document. Get this bad boy back in the center. So here's where this becomes fun and CPU intensive. Uh, we can go ahead and just reduce the weight of these strokes to like half a point. That's going to make this whole effect, uh, these effects we're going to create here in a moment a little bit more visible. I'm going to select the object and we can come over here. You probably have the width, the stroke of width tool here. Uh, I'm going to go with, hmm, what should I go with? I think I'm going to go with the scallop tool. I don't know. I really can't think too much. Maybe I'll go with the crystallize tool and then I'll double click. I'm going to set the width of this tool to 800. Uh, 800 and 800 for the height. Intensity of 10% is fine. Detail of 2 is probably good as well. Uh, everything else I'm going to kind of leave the way it is. I'm going to hit OK here and then I'm going to hover over. I'm going to get as close to the center of the this uh, group as I can and I'm going to click just a couple times or maybe just click and hold for you know half second like that and give Give Illustrator a second because it's going to take a second and just deselect and you can see the effect we get really, really cool. Uh, now I can select all of this and we can do additional stuff. We could come in here with like the twirl tool and say, well, let me double click here. Let's make sure the intensity has way down on the twirl tool. I'm going to hit OK. And let's say we want to twirl this in one direction, right? We can start to twirl that way uh, or you know what? I'm going to undo that command or control Z to undo that. Maybe we want to go over and try a different tool, something like the, I don't know, let's go with the bloat tool. And we can bring it to about the center and just click one little light click and you can see it's going to blow these sort of sharpened crystals out toward us even more. So we can just, I mean, the, the number of effects you can get with this, it's just a crazy, crazy combination of different things you can do. A lot of really, really neat stuff. Of course, you can play with the stroke weight. But one of the other cool things you can do is you can add, of course, a gradient to or as the stroke. So you can swap out a solid colored uh, stroke with a gradient stroke. And then with the gradient, we could do something like, hey, you know what, let's make this stroke like a bright yellow to uh, a darker orange color. We can come right into here and make this a nice light orangey yellow color. And you can see it's going to update here as we go. So we just create a simple gradient like that. We deselect and you can see we have this 
really insane looking effect. And of course, you can create different shapes, different angles, different levels of blend. Of course, you have all these different tools. You can do so much with these tools and, you know, different sizes of stroke, like I said before. Now, one other thing I wanted to cover before uh, we get out of here is I'm going to copy this grid from this document over here into this document. Um, now, this little grid was just created using the pen tool. It's a fairly simple little grid. Uh, but the important thing about this and the thing I really want to show you is uh, kind of a cool effect you can do uh, with this. Now, this is just kind of like this very light orange color. But let's say I want to do this effect where we have this sort of grid overlaying this effect. And maybe the uh, the stroke of that grid really needs to be quite a bit less, maybe one one point, maybe even less. Now, one point's probably fine. Uh, but we want to place a little circle at every junction point of this grid. Well, what we need to do is I'm going to set my foreground or my fill color to that little orange. And I'm going to drag out a little dot. So that dot, that's going to be our dot. If the dot looks a little bit too big to you or a little too small to you, change it now because we're going to apply it uh, in just a second. Now we're going to apply it using a script and I'm going to have this script uh, as a download down in the description of this video. It's a, a script somebody else made but it's a really useful, really cool script. And also down in the description of this video, I will have the exact place to place it in your hard drive or on your hard drive, whether you're Windows or Mac, so it will show up here in your scripts menu. And that's the DUP at Selected Anchors or DUP at Selected anchor, uh, Anchors. So once you download the file and place it on your hard drive, you'll have to, you know, close down Illustrator, open it back up, and it'll appear here in your scripts flyout menu if you place it in the proper folder. And again, all that info will be in the description to this video. So here's what we need to do to make that script work. We simply select the little dot we drew, and then hold down shift and select your grid or your series of lines. This is a group you can see down here. It's this group here. It's all these grid lines grouped up. And then we just go file, scripts, DUP at selected anchors, deselect and you can see that one dot has automatically been placed at every junction point of that grid pretty cool now they're not grouped together or anything so that's kind of a little bit of a pain in the neck uh, but what we could do is grab the magic wand tool select that and it's going to select all of those points hit command or control g to group them up and voila they're all grouped up we could go like transparency and i don't know set it to like an overlay blend mode or something that eh, overlay is not really going to work in this case maybe something like color dodge or something and that's kind of a cool little effect maybe actually looking at it, I will also set the lines to color dodge so it all kind of blends together over our little effect just like so. So yeah, that's pretty much it. A little long-winded at times, uh, but definitely just such a cool and unique effect. I'm really glad I stumbled upon this, and I'm really glad I rediscovered it. Make sure you go uh, give some props to the original creator of the tutorial, the one who figured all of this out. Uh, really, really impressive stuff. Really neat so, like there's so many uses for something like this. I can't even begin to imagine the number of places and creative applications something like this has. Uh, just so cool and definitely not a way that I would think to use those transform and manipulation warp tools and blending and all this different stuff. Plus, of course, you have the added bonus of that little script to boom, 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 add all the little dots to the grid points. You really can't go wrong. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you hit the little like button, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future for creating this effect whatever you want to call it that's it get it got it good nathaniel dodson tutvid.com i'll catch you in the next one